if Putin thought Trump was really that supportive of him, why didn't he invade when Trump was in office? It's at least worth asking that question if you're not locked into one intransigent thought. Apparently, Saudi Arabia won't even pick up the phone for the president of the United States. There is no denying that Saudi Arabia isn't playing ball with Joe Biden. And you know what? You can say what you want, but this would have never happened to Donald Trump. Never. No one was ever ignoring Donald Trump's calls. Yeah, because if you ignored Donald Trump's calls, you didn't know how he would respond. Maybe he'd send an angry tweet, or maybe he'd just like ban your country from everything. You don't know. That's why I bet in these situations, Biden actually wishes that he could hire Trump to step in as President Wildcard. You know, just keep everyone on their toes. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! You can't handle the truth. When you turn on the regular media, you know, the lying legacy, corporate corrupt mainstream propaganda machine, and they interview generals and politicians and the talking heads of Washington, D.C., we are told that basically Ukraine is this bastion example of democracy, and we must stand with them as defenders of democracy. We are told that the sanctions that we have placed on Russia and the fact that it's causing inflation and high prices here, which is really not the case, but I'll get into that in a few minutes, but we're told to endure this because it's the fight for democracy. And even the president of Ukraine, Zelensky, Wazinski, Karpinski, whatever ski, is being upheld as this hero, this, this, this mythic defender of democracy, almost on the same level as George Washington. We all need to take a step back and have a reality check here. President Zelensky and the courage that he has shown. And in Congress, we are trying to get the administration on board. And President Biden is showing moral leadership, just like President Zelensky is showing moral leadership. He, of course, by his example, uh, shows the kind of courage we all hope we can reach and, and, and provide at, at a moment of uh, real testing. Government doesn't give us our rights. Our rights come to us from God, and government is just a shared tool to secure them. And yeah. you see that spirit, that American uh, Philadelphia 1787 spirit yeah. in, in Zelensky right now. So the American spirit is alive and well in Ukraine, and that's why we need to stand with them. Okay, let's, um, let, let's take a look at some facts here. It was just yesterday, 24 hours ago, that President Zelensky outlawed 11 different political parties within Ukraine. In fact, one of them, the Opposition Platform for Life, had 43 members of the Ukraine parliament. They are the largest opposition party. They have been included in this ban, which was enacted under martial law. Ukraine at war. Zelensky now has virtually unlimited wartime power. And so what has he done? He has taken any group that has any type of political opposition to him and his agenda, and they have now basically been put on the Ukraine no-fly list, domestic terrorist, despite the fact there hasn't been a shred of evidence to prove that any of these political opposition parties were in any way connected with or are supportive of Russia. In fact, the party that he banned that has 43 members of parliament who are now not allowed to go to parliament, they are not allowed in any way to exercise their duties that they were elected to do because they have now been declared illegal. Uh, the Opposition for Life Party came out immediately at the start of the invasion and not only decried the invasion, they decried Putin and made sure that in no certain terms they made it evidently clear that they were loyal to Ukraine. But of course, you know, as we've learned from all socialists who sometimes hide under other names like, oh, uh, 
Democrat, never let a good crisis go to waste. We watched in our own country our own rights be trampled on and usurped. We watched ourselves be subjugated to mandates and lockdowns, all in the name of our health. And prior to that, the Bush administration did it with the Patriot Act and brought in the, the basically unbridled, unchecked police state, reading our emails, observing our text messages, watching everything that we do on social media. And that even triggered the illegal spying on and wiretapping of a candidate for president, one Donald J. Trump. And, and you see how one thing becomes another thing. We watched in Canada... Justin Trudeau basically declared truck drivers domestic terrorists and froze their bank accounts and made sure they couldn't get insurance on their vehicles anymore and they probably won't be able to renew their driver's licenses and have stripped them of their ability literally to make a living and to live. But we're told that this is democracy and now you've got Zelensky in Ukraine has now made it illegal for anyone to oppose him. Because on the same day that he declared 11 political parties illegal, he also brought all TV and radio broadcasting under full control of the government for what he calls a unified information policy. In other words... Not one commentator, newscaster, etc. is going to be able to say anything about the war and what's happening over there that is not fully authorized and approved by the government. Is, is that starting to sound familiar? And not one person over here in our government, not one political leader from either party, and not even most of the so-called talking heads in conservative media, are decrying this. Let that sink in. So we have Zelensky, who, by the way, long before Russia ever invaded Ukraine, he had his number one political rival who was challenging him for the job of president. He had him arrested, had all of his bank accounts frozen, had his property seized, and threw him in jail. For what? being against him, but we're told he represents democracy. I told you, and I have told you, I have told you, and you heard it here first. Zelensky is a wannabe Putin. He's just on a much smaller scale, and prior to the invasion, he didn't have any influence. He has now been elevated, like an Anthony Fauci, to rock star status. The media immediately sprang into action. And I am watching on people's Facebook pages and on Twitter accounts, people that I know personally that have, they, they, they went ahead and decided to have a big drink of this Kool-Aid and they have bought into the propaganda, all of it. And they just uphold this guy as this hero. And this is a guy who's not a nice guy by any stretch of the imagination. Again, let's cover some history here, beloved. In the beginning, this all got started back in 2014 when Barack Misobotamus decided it was time for a regime change in Ukraine. And the duly elected government was overthrown by help of our CIA. And in came this government that would ultimately give us Zelensky. This was his his whole political authority is the result of a coup, the thwarting of people's rights. That's not democracy, that's authoritarian dictatorship by any definition of the word. So why are we defending this? Well, on the one hand, I get it. And this again, I know I have to keep saying this, I am not an apologist for Vlad Putin. And we all are watching things unfold on our TV screens that, you know, the, the humanitarian need and crises there. Some of it, not all of it, but some of it, you do look at and go, uh-huh, really? But there is obviously, Russia is blowing up civilian population, blowing up civilian neighborhoods. Civilians, by the millions, are suffering. 
And you can't have a heart and not look at that and say, that's just got to stop. And so, yes, it is our natural uh, intuition, it is our natural instinct to root for the underdog. You know, Ukraine was invaded, so we are cheering for them to be able to push the invaders out. I get that. I, I get why we will stand with Ukraine on that alone. But just because Russia has invaded doesn't give Zelensky the green light and the authority to now crush and oppress the people's rights even more by not letting them dissent, by not letting them complain, by not letting them protest, by not letting them speak their minds. Because again, this is again, this is the other dirty little secret nobody wants to talk about, especially in the lying legacy corporate corrupt mainstream media and even Fox News, faux pas news, which is fraud news. Other than Tucker Carlson, I have no use for anyone. You've got everybody from uh, Brian Dillweed to Greg Gutcheck to uh, 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 I just forgot his name completely just out, out my head it went not Sean Hannity because Sean Hannity is what he is he's he's a teleprompter reader he is five line Hannity he has five lines and he regurgitates them over and 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 any broadcast depending on what the topic is and it is amazing Tucker Carlson comes out exposes what's going on in Ukraine and immediately at nine o'clock Hannity takes over to make sure that Fox News gets back on the approved script and they bring out a lunatic like Lindsey Graham to 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 give the regurgitated talking points points. Mark Levin, Saturday night or Sunday nights on Fox News, has completely lost his mind over this and basically wants us engaged with Russia on a World War III level. So don't even call Fox News the, 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 the conservative voice anymore. No, no, nay, nay. They are, they are fraud news, faux pas news, fake news. So We've got all of this dissemination of this kind of information, and yet it's time to set the record straight here. So I understand, on the one hand, the need to want to see the invaders push back, but on the other hand, there's a whole lot that went into this. Now, why do we keep perpetuating it? Well, number one, it's great cover for Biden. And it's great cover for Biden on, on, on two levels. It's great cover for Biden because, number one, the economy here is tanking and has been tanking, and nothing about our tanking economy has anything to do with sanctions against Russia. It has everything to do with his reset, his cozying up to the whole Green New Deal philosophy, declaring war on the fossil fuel industry from the day he walked into that Oval Office and was artificially installed. You print money, you give money away, you you add regulation on top of regulation, on top of regulation, supply chain issues, and we have inflation. And we have stagnation. And we have rising gas prices and no end in sight. And again, you want to talk about national security? What kind of national security is it that we keep begging countries that are basically our enemies for oil and they're all telling us to go pound sand because they have now figured out a way to really put the screws and hurt the u.s just deny us oil china has its own counter sanctions against us right now they're shutting down manufacturing cities in china well they're trying to get a, a handle on covid no they're not 60 COVID cases in a city of 17 million and they shut the whole city down? Everybody's in complete mandatory lockdown? That isn't about COVID. That's about hurting us. That's about hurting our supply chains of necessities, of, of everything that we allow to be manufactured over there. And this is all on Biden. When you have people like Trevor Noah on Comedy Central on The Daily Show saying none of this would have happened under Donald Trump, my head almost exploded. Because Trevor Noah is certainly no friend of Donald Trump. But even he's looking at all this saying, Houston, we got a problem. When Bill Maher says that 
Putin would have never invaded Ukraine had Donald Trump been in office? So Biden needs the cover. He needs us to talk about and redirect the blame of his failure on the economy and on gas. You understand, just two years ago, gas was less than $2 a gallon. Less than $2 a gallon. And now it's on an average of four fifty a gallon, seven fifty a gallon if you live in California. And then, of course, there's another reason that we want all of this sympathy for Ukraine that the Biden administration turns into cover, Hunter and the laptop. The corruption between the Bidens and Ukraine is unprecedented. Biden is a criminal, period. And he doesn't want you thinking about the laptop. He doesn't want you talking about it. He wants you looking at the people of Ukraine and, and your heart breaking for them. When in reality, Biden has denied them before the invasion happened. Biden has de denied them military aid and help more so than Donald Trump ever did. And when Donald Trump was in talks with Zelensky, it wasn't just about Hunter Biden as far as his connection with Burisma. That's not what Donald Trump was interested in. He wanted to know how bad was Ukraine being fleeced by American politicians, plural, from both parties. Bump, ba -dum, bump, Which is why the establishment said he got go. He got go. The other reason we want to keep the Ukraine issue going, the deep state loves their proxy war. Because after all, the military industrial complex, they're going to make a whole lot of money off of this. Money that they didn't make during a Trump administration. And now they are making it, and they're making up for it. And again, they're going to keep stoking this and spinning the propaganda night after night after night. We are defending democracy. Now, they're smart enough to know the American people won't tolerate the loss of American lives over there, but they can sell the American people on giving them missiles and bombs, etc., etc., etc. Oh, and by the way, Ukraine, you're going to pay. And Zelensky is just as rotten of an individual, just as rotten to the core, as Vlad Putin. He just doesn't have the same influence yet. But that's okay. The American media and our American politicians from both parties are bending over backwards to make sure that he too, that President Zelensky, becomes a rock star in whom there can be no fault. He walks on water and we can say absolutely nothing about 11 political parties being declared enemies of the state while the neo-Nazis continue to run the military. Are, are, are any of you getting this? Are, are any of you getting this? And by the way, what it has revealed, it isn't just rhinos. The Republicans have run right back to the agenda, the posture, and the policies of the 1990s. Do any of you think for a moment that whether it be Kamala Camilla thinks she's a hottie Harris, Nancy Botox Pelosi, Chuck E. Cheese Schumer, Mitch McConnell, any of you think that any of them, despite the fact that they might, one's a Republican, one's a Democrat, do you, do you think that they're watching all this in Ukraine and thinking, we need to shut down our opposition. We need a unified information policy. You know, there really is a reason why Congress has done nothing about the censoring being done by social media platforms. They don't want to. They want to control the narrative, period, and give you an illusion of free speech. Wake up, people. Wake up, wake up, and speak up.